Come on in, everybody. Got some news for you. Let me just set everything up. This is for everybody. Everybody with a idea. Come on in. I'll wait a few minutes while I have time. What am I looking for here? That's what I'm looking for. Come on in, y'all. All right, I'm gonna start this broadcast because this is about you. It is going into 2018, and I know a lot of you have ideas, a lot of you have talents, a lot of you have skills, and a lot of you are multi-talented, and you don't know which way, which direction, which talents, which skills that you can use and turn it into several things. Revenue, extra income, generational wealth, a business. So I'm going to start off with this. This broadcast is for creative entrepreneurs. Who are creative entrepreneurs? Creative entrepreneurs are people who have an idea in mind. They may have shared this idea with other people and said, you know what? If I tell you this idea, you better not tell nobody. If you said that once in your lifetime, you got an idea. Any idea is not a bad idea because trust me, if you had that idea, somebody else has had that idea too. No idea is a bad idea. I will say every idea is a great idea, depending on how you market it, what you do with it. Um, there was a post, I think it was a Facebook post about these two women who went on Shark Tank. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people, I'm going to say this, a lot of people feel as though, you know what, I have an idea and how would it work on Shark Tank? Hmm, how would it work on Shark Tank? Now, personally to me, every idea is not meant for Shark Tank. It's not. Those sharks are sharks. That's why it's called Shark Tank. I'm going to tell you about a clip I saw. Hi, son. How you doing? This broadcast is for you, too. I'm glad you're in here. Thank you for joining me. Um, There was these two women, and their idea was to start a lip bar. Now, most of y'all have prob probably already seen this. Um, across social media, and they wanted to start a lip bar. Lip bar meaning different types of lipstick, different kinds of lipstick, but it was all naturally, love you too, son, all naturally made. Now, out of that Shark Tank session with these two women, they walked away with no deal. They didn't get a deal. The sharks sort of said some not so nice things. And I'm sure y'all probably seen this on social media. 
But what these two women did was they took their idea and they kept it moving. They kept it progressing, even though to the sharks, it was a suck ass idea. To the Shark Tanks, it was an idea that wasn't going to go anywhere, wasn't going to make them any money. And these two ladies walked away with nothing. No deal, no nothing. What did they do? They kept their idea alive. And now today, they are at a, I believe, a $400,000 business. They did that without the financing of the sharks. So I say to you, don't discredit your idea. Never discredit your idea. Don't always look for Shark Tank to start your idea. Every idea is not meant for Shark Tank, period. It's just not. Every idea is not meant for Shark Tank. So don't think, oh, I'm just going Shark Tank and present my little, my little idea, my business. Nope, you're not. Try and do it yourself. I don't know why my T-shirt is not acting right. I don't like it. Something's not right here. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know, y'all. I'm doing it backwards. All right, there you go. So... What I want to share with you, I'm going to give you a list of 25. I'm sure there's is 100, but my broadcast is not going to last for two hours because I don't want to lose anybody. Uh, Rainier, what I would like for you to do is share this broadcast to bring your friends in here because they need this as well. So I'm going to go through... 25 occupations out of that 25 occupations if you fit into that occupation and if you ever had an idea your idea can be converted into a business now if you stay to the end of the broadcast i got a gift but you got to stay to the end of the broadcast to get the free gift so here we go Number one, photographer. If you are a photographer or a videographer and you had an idea about expanding what you do, you can. And you could take it. Well, I'm going to save that for later. Next is carpenter. If you are a carpenter, and you working for someone else, you too can start your own home remodeling business, carpenter, and network with other people that will fit into your home remodeling business, such as a plumber, a electrician, plumber, electrician, and a person that lays down the floors, home remodeling. Next is, well, I just said, said these two, plumber and electrician. If you are a plumber and the electrician, you too can also start your business. Now, I'm going to give you a story about a friend of mine that at one point I was in close contact with. I'm not going to say his name, but anybody who knows me and knows what I'm about to say, he is an electrician. Thank you, son. He is an electrician. So what he did was he is a licensed electrician. He opened up his business as an electrician and he did 
I know he did residential. I'm not too sure about commercial, but my point with this is he hired other electricians and he got contracts for residential jobs. I dare he was working for somebody, but he converted it and now he works for himself. Can he take it a step further? He most certainly can. He can turn it into automation if he's thinking ahead with technology. Moving on. Categories. Nurse. Practical nurse. Registered nurse. Certified nursing assistant. Home health aide. Home care aides. Ladies and gents, because you do have some men that is in this category. If you fit into this category, you too can go from your nine to five to working for yourself. You too can go from your nine to five to working for yourself where you are dictating your income, your own revenue stream. Next on the list is mechanic. There's all kind of mechanics. If you are a mechanic and you got a nine to five too, what can you do as a mechanic to turn it into a business for yourself? Not so much the obvious of, oh, I'm going to just go out here and open up my own mechanic shop. Oh, well, that's great. That's going to cost you a lot of money. A whole lot of money. There's other things you can do to turn your skills as a mechanic into a business. Think about it. If you're not sure what it is, I'm going to say this after this thread. Put your comments in. Let me know that you are a mechanic and I will tell you what business you can start on your own as a mechanic without having to work for someone else in the nine to five. It's all about transition. You can do both at the same time, but it's about transition. And it's easy, and y'all have heard me say this before, it is easy, very easy to get up four, five, three o'clock in the morning, take a shower, um, get ready for your job. That's easy to do. Because you know, when you get to work, all you got to do is do the job, clock the hell out, wait for your pay period to end so you could do what? Collect the check. That's the beauty of a job. That's why it's so easy. If entrepreneurship was easy, every freaking body would be doing it. But nope, everybody's not doing it. You know why? Because it's not that easy to be an entrepreneur. It requires work. And I'm going to tell you something. Being an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs work three, five times as hard as an employee. And you might say, Carol, how can you say that? That's simple. I've been on both sides of the fence for over 30 years. That's how I know because I'm speaking from experience. Now, Moving on with the list, physical therapist and physical therapist assistant, occupational therapist, um, personal trainers, yoga instructors, and that category, athletic trainers. Most of these individuals 
are in business for themselves, but here's the key. They are working too hard and not smart. Don't get offended. If you fit that category, don't get offended. And please don't take it personal. What you can do is listen to your options. If you are a yoga instructor, a physical therapist, physical therapist assistant, occupational therapist, personal trainer, athletic instructor, you, you people, you professionals in that category that I just mentioned, nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, you may, may not. You may already be in business for yourself, but there's a saying, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself, whatever. However, you're in business. Your next step for 2018 would be to leverage your time for money. That's your next step. Leverage your time for money. Now, there is a key to doing it. You want to know how to do it. You got to send me a comment saying, I am a yoga instructor. I'm a physical therapist. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a PTA. And that is um, physical therapy, a physical therapy assistant. Put in your comments what category you fit in so I can show you how to leverage your time for money because if you already have a business, that's what you need to be doing. Okay, moving right along. Cosmetologist, esthetician, makeup artist. Who else is in this category? Microbladers, threaders, lash techs, nail techs. I'm an even kicking ear massage therapist. Now, if you are in the nine to five category, because you're working for somebody else and you are giving up money for your booth rent, only ones that's not, and I'm sorry, barbers is included in this too. Only ones that may not be giving up money for booth rent is massage therapists. So everybody else, if you are working in a salon somewhere, but you're working for somebody else, you're giving up money for booth rent, and you decide that you want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, keep it coming, keep it coming, and you decide that you want to branch off away from the salon, from the spa, and you decide, you know what? I want to do my own damn thing. That's cool. However, you better have a plan. You are going to need a plan. This category of people, you need a plan. If you are already there, your next step is leverage your time for money because it's a whole lot of things you could be doing. If you're a cosmetologist, nail tech, lash tech, microblader, threader, who am I missing? Barbers, I'm missing somebody else other than massage therapists. It'll come to me. That category of professionals, you too should be leveraging your time for money. And it's a whole lot. When I mean, oh, it's a whole lot you could be doing. And you know what? 90% of y'all in this category is not taking advantage of it. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Moving right along. Legal assistant, financial of legal assistant, financial advisors, pharmacy techs engineers, medical assistants, virtual assistants, medical scientists, researchers, you play your instrument or 
You know how to draw. Architect. Now, you category of people, most of y'all are nine to five individuals. Nothing wrong with nine to five, not knocking it. However, what you have can be turned into revenue based on the skill that you have developed from your job. All the ones that I just mentioned, you have developed some skills from that job. Why are you not using it? You should be using it. Hey, hi, Sky Blue. Thank you for tuning in. You should be using that skill that you develop from your job and converting it into generational wealth and income stream and doing it from there. But this category of people, you have to start at ground one because you are a nine to five individual. So you're transitioning into entrepreneurship, which means you at ground level. But once you learn the elements of starting a business and using the skills that you learned from your nine to five job, and you follow the freaking blueprint, you're on your way. Then you too can leverage your time for money. I have a security business and at first I was not focused until I realized that I need to focus. And that's key. We're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. But first, let me get past this first group because there's something special about this group and i'm gonna tell you who's in that group and why it's so special next is self-enrichment education instructors what the hell is a self-enrichment education instructor these are people that are personal development coaches that would be me and anybody else that does what i do and what we do is we take individuals from point A, which is wherever you're at, wherever level you're at, we start there. We don't start, at least I don't. I don't start you where I'm at unless you're already there. If you're already there where I'm at, I introduce you to somebody else that could take you to your next level. But if you are not where I'm at, I'm going to start you from where you're at and transition you to where you want to be. It all starts with a vision and everybody has a vision. Next group of people is authors, virtual assistants. If you, hmm, everybody has the ability Tamara, I hope I'm saying your name right. I want to talk about what you can do as a security guard. Um, everybody has an ability to write a book. I don't give a shit what your damn skill is. If you have a skill, a, a skill and a talent or a gift, you have the ability to turn your skill, your talent, and your gift into a book. You may say, well, Carol, who is going to purchase my book? The same people that are looking for something that you have. That's who's going to purchase your book. You never know. Trust me. You never know. Never know. Never know. Oh, oh I got to stay focused. All right. Now, um... What's so special about the certain categories that I gave y'all? Thank you for the hearts. Keep the hearts coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep the hearts coming. Now, for 2018, the lit, the 25 that I gave you, for it has been forecasted for 2018, certain occupations is going to excel and they're going to grow massively. 
So if you're in one of the 25 that I mentioned, that I'm going to give you, that the Labor of Brewer and Statistics Office say these occupations is going to grow, like skyrocket for 2018. If you in this category, I'm going to say this, take advantage of where you're at. And I want you to think about start transitioning. Start the transition now, like freaking yesterday. Start the transition. So here we go. On the list for 2018, there's 30. What I did, I picked the top. I picked the top 10. Somebody calling, can't answer the phone. That's a client trying to book an appointment. And they just won't give up. Okay. So the top 10, I picked the top 10, but it is 30. So your top 10 are medical assistants, self-enrichment educational teachers, engineers, occupational therapists, pharmacy technicians, financial advisors, personal trainers, skin care specialists, yoga instructor, physical therapist, and physical therapist assistants. There's 30, but I selected the top 10. Now, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics um, Office, the ones I just mentioned, those occupations, occupations is going to grow massively. If you are in that category, you should be taking that talent, that skill that you learned from your nine to five and transition it into a business. Now, Tamara, let's talk about you. You says you have a security business and at first you was not focused and you realized you needed to focus and you started out as a security guard. Now, my question for you, Tamara, is this. If you started out as a security guard and now you have a security business, what are you doing with your security business so I could tell you what your next transition is? Now, I know Facebook is a little bit delayed. Hi, Jacqueline. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining, Mr. Russell. Tamara, when you get time, just type in what are you doing with the security business. And I'm going to keep it moving. But once I see that you have typed it in, I'm going to address that. Okay? Hi, Jacqueline. How you doing? Jacqueline, everybody, if y'all see her, Jacqueline is an author. She is a child advocate for children with special needs. So, Jacqueline, what I would like for you to do is I want you to type in the comments how people can connect with you. She also wrote a book. Jacqueline, put the title of your book in. If it is on Amazon, put that in there too. You have my permission to do that, Jacqueline. It's okay to go ahead and do it. And the reason why I told her that she can go ahead and do it because it's rude to come into somebody's broadcast and start promoting your own business. So as a ethical and moral um, thing, that's something broadcasters don't do. We don't do that. We don't come into somebody's broadcast and start promoting our business unless we have permission to do so. And Jacqueline has permission to do that, fighting for my child's life. Can you put in how they may contact you for what you are doing as an advocate, Jacqueline, while I move along? So how many steps is it for you to transition from employee to entrepreneur? There is about 15 steps. Can you do them? Hell yeah. 
anybody could do them. But I'm going to tell you where it starts at. And when I tell you where it starts at, I want you to um, give it some serious thought. Because in today's time, you need to ask yourself, do I go out here and get a second job? That's an option. That's an option. Do I go out here and get a part-time job such as, I don't know, driving, whatever, delivering pizza? That's an option. Oh, it's not out yet? Okay. All right. Because I know Jacqueline is in my, um, she's in one of my private groups. That's why I had her do that. Okay. She put in there how you can contact her. Um, if you have thought about it, give it some serious thought. Don't play with it. And I'm going to say this. If you're serious about having a second income, I want you to tell me what makes more sense. What makes more sense to you? Getting a second job where your income, again, is going to be dictated to you like your primary job. You want to get a time where you have to report to work, take a break, go to the bathroom. What time you can go to lunch? Now you got two jobs that's like that. Two jobs that you got a certain time that you need to report to is dictated to you how much money you're going to make is dictated to you when you can take a break is dictated to you when you can take a lunch is dictated to you when you can leave then you got with a paycheck compare that to creating your own hours writing your own check going to work when you feel like it Yes, you were, Tamara. And the key is, I'm going to get back to what I was saying. And the key is to stay focused. And I'm going to come back to you in a few minutes. But let me finish this thought before I forget it. So those are your options. Me personally, I've done both. And it's hard for me at this point to go back to a job because I've gotten adjusted and I've gotten accustomed to having my freedom. And when you are an entrepreneur, it's all about freedom. Freedom to do what the hell you want to do. That's what it comes down to. Is it hard? Yes, I'm going to tell you it is. It's nothing easy about what I do or any other entrepreneur that's out there that have their own business who don't have a primary job to fall back on as a means of an income. Entrepreneurs have just that, their business. They don't have a security blanket to fall on. If we don't go out there and do what it is that we need to do for our business, guess what? We can't pay our bills. We can't take care of our children. We can't get the things we want in life. There's no freedom in that. It's called freaking broke city. If we don't do what we have to do to maintain our business, we are broke. Period. If you don't show up for your job for one freaking day, you may or may not get paid. If you are in a job where you build up annual leave, sick time, whatever, you still going to get paid for that day. But as a business owner, let me not show my ass up for my business. I'm not going to make no money. This is how come I say entrepreneurs 
work three to five times as hard as people who have a job because we don't have a security blanket. But is entrepreneurship rewarding? Absolutely it is. I'll tell you why. Now, it's rewarding for one of the main reasons I can think of, taxes. If you are, and think about this, if you are an employee, you pay taxes before you get your money. You don't believe me? Take a look at your pay stub. If you are a nine to five, nine to five, you pay taxes before you get your check. IRS rule. If you are a business owner, you pay taxes on after your expenses. I'm going to say this again. If you are a business owner, your taxes is paid after your expenses. Which one employee, employee or entrepreneur is sitting in a better position? Which one? The employee or the entrepreneur? Which one? One pays taxes before they get their check. One pays taxes after their expenses, period. I'm going to tell you a key, a gemstone. If you own a business and there is a business owner on here, there's several business owners on here. Where is she? Um, if you are Lindsay, are you still on here? Jacqueline, are you still on here? Okay, Lindsay and Jacqueline, if they're still on here, they can they'll understand what I'm talking about. If you are a business owner and you have a business, a legitimate business, and you're not treating that freaking business like a hobby. Because if you treat your business like a hobby, guess what? You're going to make hobby freaking money. Nobody wants that. Okay, Tamara, then you understand what I'm about to say. If you have a business and you're an entrepreneur, a true entrepreneur, not a hobby entrepreneur, but a true entrepreneur, you're working your business 24-7 like it ain't nobody's business. And you make purchases for your business. Are you making purchases for your business in your personal name or your business name makes a big difference if you're making pur purchases for your business in your personal name you go out let's say you needed furniture you needed new equipment you go to the store and you purchase the new equipment but when you purchase the when you purchase the new equipment, great, Jacqueline, because I'm about to tell you something. When you purchase the equipment or whatever it is that you're buying into your personal name, on the business side, it doesn't have any value. However, if you go to the store and you purchase your business, purchase your equipment and your supplies into your business name, guess what? It's a write-off. So you're going to pay taxes after all of your business expenses. So you made X amount of dollars for the year. Your expenses, supplies, equipment, whatever it is you bought, whatever money you have left over, that's the part that's going to be taxed. Not the money that you made, but the part that's going to be taxed is after your business expenses. That's one of the benefits of being an entrepreneur. Now, I'm going to go into part B, then, then I'm going to tell you about a president. All right, Tamara. Yay, yay. I'm going to part two, and then I'm going to tell you about 
a president that everybody should have listened to, even though I personally, I got an issue with this president because he did something, but he did something that I liked. He did something that I didn't like. So I'm going to go into that in a minute. Part two, you have an idea. Whether that idea is from a gift, a talent, or a skill, it's an idea here. Second part is you have a vision. Your vision is here and here in your heart. Nobody can see your vision for your idea but you. You might can explain it to somebody, but visualization is all yours. It's all yours. So you have a vision for your idea. Next is your mission statement. Do y'all really believe that everybody is a candidate for your idea? Everybody is a candidate for your business? No, they're not. Everybody is not a candidate for your product or your service or whatever it is that you're trying to sell or whatever your idea is. You may have a great idea, a great vision, and you, know, and you would think everybody's going to want it. No, everybody isn't. And that's not a good marketing strategy, period. That's a dumb marketing strategy if you think everybody's a candidate for what you got to offer. Nope. What you want to do is you want to think about what your idea is. What the is it a product or is it a service? You got to break it down like that. Is it a product or is it a service? Then you want to ask yourself, who can use my product? Who can use my service? Who can benefit? from my product who can benefit from my service that's called niche marketing hopefully y'all are taking notes because normally i teach this in my marketing classes and you ladies and gents are getting it free i'm gonna give you some but i'm not going to give you all if you want all i'm gonna tell you what you got to do at the end of the broadcast Next is what type strategy are you going to use to reach your niche market? What type, thank you for the hearts, what type strategy are you going to use to reach your niche market? There's a whole lot of strategies out there in our world, but you have to learn what strategies is going to be most effective to reach your niche market, your target market for your specific product, for your specific service? Do y'all see how I'm breaking this down? Hopefully y'all understand what I'm putting down. I'm hoping that you are. Hoping that you're taking notes because this is going to benefit you and take notes because this works. I know it works because I do. And I've taught other people how to do it. Next is after you figure out which strategy you're going to use, how are you going to put that strategy into action? There's a lot of ways. Thank you, Ta thank you, Tamara. There's a lot of ways to put your strategy into some type of action that's called implementation you're going to need to do that to move this your product your service right along after that you have to decide who has the money to purchase your product or service do you want to market to people that don't have no money do you want to market to people who do not have any money? My answer would be no. Why? Don't have no money. 
How they gonna buy your product or service and they don't have no money? What you gonna do? Give it to it for free? Then you shouldn't be in a business because you're giving away your product and you're giving away your service. So no, you don't want to do that either. Are you going to market to people who have a nine to five? Are you going to market to people who has a certain amount of money by demographics? That you can find out. That's public information. I could tell you where you can find that out. And it's based on zip code. Are you going to market to people that are struggling in their nine to five? No, they need their money for their family. Not gonna market to them, don't be greedy. You wanna target people who can afford to buy what it is you have to offer. Plain and simple. Next is you have to determine how are you going to make this money? Da, da, da. How are you going to make this money? That is your next step. Remember I said it was 15 steps? I'm not going to give you all 15, but I'm giving you quite a few. After that, after you decide how you're going to make this money, that includes revenue streams revenue streams what type of marketing are you going to do to market your product or service to a specific niche market to and what revenue stream are you going to capture your audience to purchase your product or service let me give you an example um revenue streams meaning now this person no i'm in a live stream why is he calling me because i'm not going to answer this phone i nope can't do that i'm in a live stream um revenue streams i'm going to say this use social media to your advantage use social media to your advantage what do i mean by that there's certain marketing techniques that don't work today that used to work years ago such as newspaper marketing does that still work today at a hundred percent no it doesn't it doesn't um word of mouth is the greatest marketing technique which means that you start to build a referral business which means that you start to build a referral business next is relationship marketing people will connect with you based on they like you they know you they trust you so you have to build in today's time today's marketing techniques it's all about relationship marketing i don't care how you look at it if they don't know you they don't like you they don't know you they don't trust you you ain't gonna sell nothing to them because they ain't gonna buy it plain and simple so relationship marketing is based on they must like you they must grow to know you they must trust you which means you need to engage in conversation with your potential clients that you are marketing your product or service to. Now you may say, who got time for that? Your ass do. If you want to be in business, you do. Next is you have to decide if you don't have a product, 
how are you going to create it? If you don't have a product, how are you going to create your product? Creating a product is generational wealth. And it's up to you how you market it to make it generational wealth. Creating a product is also intellectual property. It's up to you to decide what type of intellectual property are you going to create. It's up to you. You learn all that in class. Next, you have to decide on how much money do you want to make? How much money do you want to make? So we're going to do a little exercise. Um, everybody has a phone. Pull your phones out. Go to the calculator. And I want somebody to tell me how much money do they want to make per month. We're going to start there. We're not going to go year. We want to go per month. And if you see me looking like I'm shining, that's because I'm having a hot flash right about now. So we're going to calculate her. Somebody type in how much money they want to make per month. See if I can stop myself from shining. $1,000 a month. Okay. Jacqueline, I want you to tell me how much is your product? That's all I want to know is I don't need to know what the product is, but just tell me how much is one of your products. And I can tell you what you need to do to make that $1,000 a month. Let me know. Type it in. $9.99. Okay. That's simple. Jacqueline, you need to sell 100. Is this for your uh is this for your book, Jacqueline? If it's for your book, you need to sell a hundred of them. To make a thousand dollars a book, to make a thousand dollars a month. You need to sell 100 books. How are you going to sell these 100 books? I'm going to tell you. Automate the book. Put the book online. You automate the book, put it online, put it up there for auto download. That way, while you're asleep, you are making your thousand dollars a month. Does that help you, Jacqueline? Okay. Now, Tamara. Okay, great. So, Jacqueline, if you need help as far as the auto download. Connect with me. You got my phone number, so just give me a call and we'll talk about that whenever you're ready. Tamara, let me go back and answer you. You have, you started your security business and you found yourself helping and spending instead of reinvesting your money into your security business. And I take it that you have some contracts. What you can do, Tamara, because you are at the point of leveraging your time for money. You have hired you have hired other security guards. And you started your own business at different sites. However, you can start a online course 
in security. If you need assistance and guidance with how to start an online course and you're ready to take that class, you also too can reach out to me so that you can start leveraging your time for money by teaching an online class that has to do with security. My number where I can be reached is 267-864-8639. The key to everything I said requires a plan. At the end of the day, to make any of this work, you must have a plan. You must have an agenda. You must have an agenda and you must, you must have a plan. No plan, no agenda, no business. It will not work unless you have a plan and you put that plan into action. You be committed. You look at it every day like you're looking at your skin because that's what it's going to take. If you're looking at your plan every day, that is going to help you stay focused, be determined, and be consistent and want it so bad that you can taste it. And it's going to become a reality because you are constantly at it. You're at it 24-7 because you have a goal in mind. You have a plan in mind. You have an agenda in mind. And one thing you never do is you don't get sidetracked and don't listen to naysayers and dream stealers. Naysayers and dream stealers will tell you, you know what? That shit don't work. And what they do, they may go out there and try your goddamn plan. All because you told it to them and they said, oh, that's not going to work. Listen, it is going to work. It's all about how much time and investment you invest in yourself to make your dream, your goal, your idea work for you. So that's all I have for tonight. I wanted to put this out. This broadcast is for everyone that has an idea, a talent, a gift, or a skill. I gave you some gems. I gave you a blueprint to start. If you need guidance on that blueprint, you need guidance on how to start, you need guidance on the steps to take, the elements to take, then you need to connect with me so we could take you to the next step. My number is 267-864-8639. You can also follow me on Instagram at Philly Timeout Spa. I also have, and I'm not going to give you that. I'll wait to give you that one. Um, if you are ready to transition, there is an ebook titled Employee to Entrepreneurship that gives you all the steps that you need to put into play so you can go from employee to entrepreneur. It's okay to do both by all means. If you want to work your job because you've been there for 15, 13, 10, 20, 40, 50 years and you're not ready to become a full-time entrepreneur, don't. I'm not saying quit your job. I'm saying step into the world of entrepreneurship. It doesn't hurt. You got nothing to lose. You got everything to gain if you follow the blueprint and do it the right way. The only way it won't work is if you do nothing. That's the only way this do not work is if you absolutely do nothing. But if you take the first step and you think outside the box, you step outside your comfort zone, 
you'll have the success that you want. It works. Successful people fail their way to the top. There used to be a saying amongst entrepreneurs, and the saying was, I see you at the top. That was back in the 80s and the 90s. We would say to each other, you know what, I see you at the top. And we say that because we help each other get to the top. That's why we say that I will see you at the top because we would help each other get to the top in entrepreneurial land. In today's time, in this century, it's changed. It shifted just a little bit. And now it is, I see you over the top. That's what we say today. I will see you over the top because I'm going to help you get over the top. And we will celebrate over the top together. And that's what we do. We, in our world, help each other over the top. And we celebrate together over the top. But it takes a paradigm shift, a mental paradigm shift to shift from how you think as an employee to how you think as an entrepreneur. The mentality of an employee compared to the mentality of an entrepreneur is totally different. And anybody who's been in my shoes, who have done both for a very long time, we know when to shift. We know how to think as an employee. We know how to think as an entrepreneur. And we know how to change and shift the paradigm shift. But if you've never done it, it's a mental paradigm shift. It's a battle within yourself because you are so used to, as an employee, your job, collecting a guaranteed check as long as you show up and do the work. That's easy. But when you step into entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurship life is a little bit different. I'm not going to tell you that it's easy. I am going to tell you that is hard. I am going to tell you that it can be complicated. I am going to tell you that it can be difficult, but I'm also going to tell you there's freedom with it. As an employee, do you really think you have freedom? No, you don't. Do not. As an entrepreneur, you are free to do what the hell you want to do. If you feel as though you don't want to get up at a certain time, because you created your own clock to punch, that's called freedom. It really is. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is what I teach is this. I teach you about the fear of business because you are going to have fears. But I also show you how to overcome those fears. The biggest fear a person that's an employee has is what if I make this investment into myself and I fail? That's the biggest fear that an employee has. Well, guess what? Employees. It's called risk. But you have to be willing to invest in yourself Take the risk and look success in the face. Be committed. Follow the blueprint. Be consistent. Be determined. That's a whole lot of bees. But guess what? Those bees makes you self-sufficient. Those bees cause you to have financial freedom. Those bees give you tax breaks. And speaking of tax breaks, now is part three. I'm going to tell you about a president that I mentioned earlier. This president 
followed, and I think I, I mentioned this before, I'm not sure. This president followed these families that were, that had a desire. They had a desire to start a business. Um, this president is a businessman. Only thing I didn't like about this president is that he um he uh how can I say this? He gave a command and that command he gave caused me and my sister to be involved in a war back in 1991, which took us away from our families. That's the only reason why I don't like him. Now, why do I like him? Here's why. He followed the families from the beginning of the business until the success of their business. He highlighted these families on national TV and told their story. Great. He gave a, I don't want to say speech. Speech is the wrong word, but I'm going to say he, he was talking and in his talk, he clearly said, and this is the one thing I understood. And when he said, I like, I'm on the right track. I just got to stay there. Just got to stay there. I got to be consistent. I got to keep moving, keep pushing until I get to what I, where I want to get to. And what he said was, the best thing you can do in this world today is start a business. That's what he said. The best thing you could do in this world today is start a business because of the way the economy is ran. Who do not understand that? Who? But taking back to what I said earlier, if starting a business was easy, every freaking body would be doing it. Everybody's not doing it because it's not that easy. That's why they're not doing it. Hmm. Think about that. So, I'm going to leave you with, I gave you enough information to think about. I gave you enough information to get started. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is know your value. Know your worth. Know your value. Know your worth. Know your value. And think about where you're at now. Where are you now and where you want to be in 2018? So I'm going to say good night. My name is Carolyn and I do live broadcasts. I am a business coach, spa trainer, and I'm also a licensed massage therapist. That's just in the spa field. I'm not going to get into my whole dossier. I don't have a resume. I have a whole dossier. So I'm not going to get into my dossier. I'm just going to tell you what I am that pertains to my broadcast. So I am a business coach. I help individuals from where they are to where they want to be. If they are nine to five, I help them transition into entrepreneurship and this is just individuals like you individuals like me that want to start a small business create generational wealth create an intellectual property and reap the benefits from your hard work as long as you are consistent so one way to contact me is 267-864 8639. You can text me, preferably text me, because 
if I'm serving up clients, I can't answer the phone. So I will answer a text quicker than I answer a phone. Voicemail, you can leave a voicemail, but I might not get to it until 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning when I shut down and get ready for my next day. So it's easier to text me at 267-864-8639. Follow me on Instagram at Philly Timeout Spa. You could also, um, I'm going to give you this. You can watch my videos because I do give informational videos in reference to what it is I do and on current events. And I will be putting more videos up relating to business. So that can be found on my YouTube channel. The only thing you have to do is type in my name, Carolyn Huber Black, and click on videos on my YouTube channel. I think it's like maybe a hundred and something videos there. And hopefully it's information there that can benefit somebody, anybody. But that's it. That's all I have for now. And I'm going to say good night. Stay warm. Stay blessed. Stay alert. Stay safe. And thank you for tuning in. Watch my broadcast. If you catch this on a replay, I want you to type in the comments replay. Now, for those of you that are still with me, what I want y'all to do, because I did say that I had a free gift. And what I'm going to um, send to you is my ebook. You, I'm going to give you that for free. But I need your email address. So if you can type in your email address, I can send you the ebook so you can have it. And Jacqueline, I'm writing yours down now. So I could send it to you. Tamara, if you're still on here, I need your email so I can send you the ebook the e as well. Can you type in your email address? Jacqueline, I got yours. Uh, let me scroll up. Okay. Tamara, I need your I need your email address so I can send you this book. Hello, Mr. Russell. How you doing? Hi, Joanne. How are you? If you're still on, I need your email address, Joanne. Okay, everybody, that's all I got. Remember, if you catch this on the replay, put in the comment section, replay. And if you stay to the end, I need you to send me your email address so I can send you the book. The book is titled Employee to Entrepreneurship, and it gives you all the information in there, plus the 15 steps that I talked about. And... I think that's it. Jacqueline. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Take care.